Welcome to iLecture Online and here's another example of how we use impulse in solving momentum and impulse problems and it's very much similar to the one I just did but in the previous example I had a force that was a function of time that looked like a triangle. Here the force as a function of time is actually a parabola. So it's a continually changing force over a period of four seconds where the force goes from zero to 100 newtons and back down to zero. The impulse can be calculated by calculating the area underneath that curve. But since it's not a nice geometric shape, how do you do that? And so we're probably going to have to use a calculus for that. So impulse normally is the force times the change in the time. But um, in this case, we're going to have to do things a little bit different. So if we have a 100 gram stationary object that's subjected to that particular force as indicated by the graph, what will the velocity be after the object was subtracted by the force? So the concept is still the same. We know that the impulse is equal to the change in the momentum, which is equal to the change in the mass times the velocity of the object. And since the mass doesn't change, it's equal to the mass times the change in the velocity. So solving this for a change in velocity, we can then say that the change in velocity is equal to the impulse divided by the mass. And since we know the mass, we just have to find the impulse from that. So what we, need to de what we need to do here is we need to take a small little sliver of this area and call this little area a little d area or in actuality we can actually call it a little di, a small amount of impulse. So we can say that the di, the impulse caused by this small moment in time is equal to the force at that very moment in time which is this right here times the dt, the small amount of time that has elapsed. And if I want to find the whole impulse, I total, that's equal to the integral of all the little di's, I sum them all up, and I go from time equal zero to time equals four seconds, which is equal to the integral from time equals zero to time equals four seconds of the force times dt. And of course, the force here is defined by my equation right here. So I can say that the impulse is equal to the integral of minus 25t squared plus 100t, all that multiplied times dt. And of course, that is in newtons, and it goes from t equals 0 to t equals 4 seconds. So that's called a definite integral. And then we have to integrate that, and if you remember the rules of integration, we simply add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So this is equal to minus 25t to the third power divided by 3 plus 100t squared divided by 2 evaluated from t equals 0 to t equals 4 seconds. And of course, that's all times Newton. So I should put Newtons behind it. There, I'll squeeze it in there. Doesn't look very good, does it? Let me move this over a little bit. I don't like chicken scratch like that. It makes things very confusing. So let me put newtons and evaluate from t equals 0 to t equals 4 seconds. That looks a lot better. All right, so now we have to evaluate that. Uh, I might be able to simplify things a little bit by saying that 100 divided by 2 is actually 50. And now plug it in the upper limit. So this gives us 25 or minus 25 over 3 times 100 cubed. Let's plug in the upper limit. Oh, not 100. That would be 4. Plug in the wrong limit there. That would be plug in the upper limit in 4t. And, that's what, and then plus, uh, that would be 50 times t squared. So the upper limit squared, that's 4 squared. And of course, when I plug in the lower limit, I plug in zeros, I get nothing. This is negative. That's negative. That's positive. So now let me grab my calculator. So that would be uh, 16 times 50, and subtract from that, when I take uh, 64 times 25 divided by 3 equals, and I get 267, and remember that's the impulse, which is kilograms meters per second. All right, I now have my change in momentum, the impulse, which now can go in here. So this result will then be plugged back in here. 
And we can say that the change in velocity is equal to 267 kilograms meters per second. The whole thing divided by the mass. In this case, the mass was 100 grams. 100 grams is 0.1 kilogram, 0.1 kilogram. And so this is equal to 2,670 meters per second. Wow, that's quite a change in velocity. And there you go. That's how you do that. To recap, again, we have a definition of our impulse in terms of change in momentum. We have a definition of impulse and change of the force times delta t. In this particular case, we had a force that was not constant that was not changing nicely geometrically. So we have a continually changing force according to this equation. That's a quadratic equation and it's represented by parabola. So to find the impulse there, we have to find the area underneath this curve using calculus. calculus. And uh, when we finally found the impulse, we then could plug that back into the other definition of impulse to find the change in velocity and that gave us our answer. And that's how you do a problem like that.